Hancock Ingram has announced a five-year deal to co-promote and distribute products for MSD, the world's second biggest drugs company. Products that Adcock will cover for MSD include over-the-counter medicines and some prescription drugs as well. Earlier I spoke to Adcock CEO Jonathan Lowe and Stefan Oshman, MD MSD's President for Emerging Markets, about the significance of this deal. Merck is the second largest global pharmaceutical uh, company, research-based, lots of very well-known uh, brands and products. And for us, for them to elect us as their strategic partner in South Africa you know, lends us huge, huge credibility. So we're very excited about the partnership. Um, in addition to this, we have a strong marketing and distribution capability, particularly in OTC and of course also in, in uh, certain prescription products. So this helps us build franchises uh, in, in Adcock, particularly in women's health and cardiovascular. And of course it bolsters our, our OTC capability. So the, the Merck portfolio brings a lot of well-known products to market, products like uh, Claritine, uh, Trixine, Demazine, uh, Tenoderm, etc. So to add those to, to our portfolios in partnership with, uh, with Merck really uh, means a lot to us. But you said uh, Lots, lots of OTC additions. How about prescription drugs? Are they also included in this deal? Yeah, um, we have a strong presence already in cardiovascular products. So products like uh, Fortzar, Kozar, um, Zocor, which is the originator product of, of generics and Vistatin, also add uh, to the cardiovascular portfolio. We've had a relationship now with um, with uh, Sharing Plow originally uh, through their women's health portfolio, and as you know, Sharing Plow was uh, was acquired by Merck uh, MSD some uh, about a year ago. And uh, certainly that collaboration that we've had with MSD in terms of women's health uh, uh, will continue as well. Stefan, why did you choose Adcock specifically and weren't you getting enough distribution capabilities yourself in the, the local market? As Jonathan just said, we are number two worldwide. We are number four in the emerging markets and we're number eight in South Africa. Uh, we were looking for a reputable local partner who shares our values and adds a lot of local channel presence with pharmacists, physicians, and patients. And we're very delighted to be in the partnership with ACOC. The deal needs to be seen in a global strategic context. Uh, many pharma companies are moving uh, into the so-called emerging mar into the so-called emerging markets. We have declared that part of our strategy would be a very important part of our strategy would be partnering with local and regional players. So this deal is the first deal within that strategy that we're announcing. Now, are you looking at Adcock as a local player or as a regional player? Is this going to extend beyond South Africa? Uh, currently, the deal is about South Africa, but Adcock uh, has a regional, a regional footprint. We are currently evaluating our options. We think that Africa as a continent will uh, experience enhanced economic growth going uh, going forward and uh, that's a very interesting place for us to do business and to also fulfill our mission to provide better access of high quality affordable medicines to more people. Jonathan this doesn't uh, mention anything about financial arrangements how is that how are those going to be handled with the partnership? Well I think clearly uh, apart from what Stefan has said it, I mean certainly the, it fulfills both of our joint mission uh, vision and values I think the companies are culturally very aligned uh, in terms of the, uh, the finances, it's not material in terms of the, uh, the, the finance speak uh, for, for either company, but certainly it is commercially very viable. We wouldn't be entering a partnership, obviously, if there wasn't a, a commercial opportunity to grow the brands, to increase the market presence, and uh, as uh, Stefan has said, increase accessibility, particularly uh, in, in, in South Africa. Of course, last year you were looking at a, a, a buyout of Cipla Med Pro as part of your growth strategy. Are you going to be looking at more partnerships such as this one with MDS as part of the growth strategy to, to replace that? Well, certainly what, what we've uh, said at our half-year results is that we, we, we're building um, strong franchises in, in, in this particular emerging market in South Africa, in cardiovascular products, in analgesics, in women's health, and in other such uh, portfolios. And we're looking for uh, more products, more partnerships. Uh, we've spent a lot of money in our, in our distribution center, so we really have a state-of-the-art distribution center that will take multinational products and our own to market better than uh, most of our competition. And then, of course, we've invested heavily in our supply chain, in our manufacturing capability, also sales and marketing. So all of these make us attractive uh, to multinational partners such as MSD, uh, who are willing to or who are wanting to increase their in-market presence in South Africa. We've recently consummated an empowerment deal as well, and of course empowerment credentials are, are important in this, in this market. Well, Stefan, you spoke about a, a focus on emerging markets for drug companies. Are you seeing growth in your traditional markets starting to peter out? 
Uh, there are very clear forecasts which predict that uh, um, growth in mature markets such as the US or Western Europe or Japan will be, will be limited to low single digits. Uh, uh, people, uh, some analysts are saying that 90% of the world pharma market growth will come out of the emerging markets over the next, over the next five years. So uh, a company like ours that is number two in the world that has such a strong uh, research heritage and such a strong research pipeline is naturally looking at enhancing our footprint in the emerging markets. So we want to participate in the growth and we want to do the right thing. Uh, for patients and, uh, and governments and societies in the emerging markets, and we think that's a that's a good combination. The adequate deal is a significant step forward. How about regulations in some of these emerging markets, such as South Africa, where there are ongoing changes to the regulation the regulatory environment? Is that perhaps a, 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 a hurdle for you? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that an enhancement of uh, regulatory standards will help global players, and it will help local players that are sophist uh, sophisticated. So we are uh, not at all afraid of this, it's just the opposite. We're trying to work with governments and regula uh, regulatory bodies to um, harmonize standards uh, globally. Will this go beyond marketing and distribution, perhaps into researching new medicines, uh, manufacturing as well, Jonathan? Well, at the moment, it's just uh, it's marketing and distribution. You know, certainly in time, let's let, let's see what unfolds. Uh, we're in the process of getting all of our factories internationally accredited, and uh, certainly to look at contract manufacturing opportunities uh, with partnerships in the future is something that, yeah, of course, from an adcock side, we'd look at. But of course, uh, that sits with MSD in terms of their choices. How soon will this take effect? Is it, is it from today? Pretty much, yes. Uh, and you, you have the capabilities to, to, to hit the ground running? Absolutely. We have, we've got the capacity in our distribution center. We've got a full team that are, are dedicated to this on, on both sides of uh, the business. So we set up a joint uh, marketing committee between MSD and between uh, Adcock Ingram, and uh, hopefully they'll make the products fly and increase accessibility in the South African market. And how is this, this joint venture going to be uh, managed going forward from here, Stefan? There will be a joint operating committee. Uh, with uh, senior executives from uh, from both uh, companies, that's a, that's a proven uh, a mo a modus operandi, and uh, that's uh, it's it's like um, uh, in, in in JVs or other more virtual uh, settings that, that that works very well. Jonathan, how are you seeing the markets at the moment? We spoke to you at the end of your first half. Of course, we're, we're going into the second half at yeah. the moment. And you were talking about a pickup in consumer demand. And we have seen retail sales coming through to, to back that up. Is that what you're seeing as we enter the second half? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to say. And uh, you know, certainly, we've seen, I think, an improvement in trading from what was the, uh, the first quarter of, the, of this calendar year. So first quarter was, was very tough, as, uh, as we said. Whether it's a bit of World Cup fever and, of course, the 7.4% price increase that the Department of Health granted, uh, causing some, some buying activity, possibly. But uh, we, we, we're still cautiously optimistic for a consumer turnaround sometime towards the end of the year. But it's, it's very difficult to say.